Hi everybody, how's it going today? I wanted to take a few minutes, uh, multi-purpose here. First of all, quick reintroduction of our family because I know I've got several new people who have joined our channel and that really excites me. I wanna say thank you to everybody who does watch this. Also to give an update. And I'm gonna apologize if you hear crying in the background. It's actually kind of late. I just laid a couple little ones down while my husband is still gone with the oldest five. So, one of them's not overly thrilled. He normally goes down better, but it's an off day. First off, I'm going to apologize if the camera seems wobbly. I, for some reason, I'm struggling to hold it steady tonight. Could just be because it's getting late. So, anyhow, really quick, my husband, Sean, and I, we live in Western South Dakota in the Black Hills. We have seven biological children together. They, we've got a wide range of ages. They're all singletons. We have five daughters, two sons from age seven, almost 17 down to two. There is a gap in the middle, the about five and a half years between number four and number five. That there's another story involved in that gap. But what we have been doing for over a year now is actually working to adopt. Now we're not going the standard routes. When people hear adoption, most people think either international or infant. We're not looking at either. We're actually looking at older child adoption primarily through foster care. And the journey actually started because of a child that was coming from a dissolved adoption, which is a whole other topic. I've done a video on that before. And I'm going to shift here because that wobbling camera is driving me nuts. So what exactly does that mean for our family? We are not licensed to do foster care. We are not. Uh, what the best way to explain that is every state has its own rules. Our state uh, has a maximum of five or six, all of a sudden I can't remember, uh, children in the home. I believe it's six, but I was told by the state, even if we had five, they probably would not approve us because it would only leave one space in our home. We have seven. So that excludes us from being licensed through the state. So what we had to do was pay to go through a private adoption agency and the state will happily allow us to adopt a child from foster care. It's one of those things. I, all we can do is shake our head at it. Um, there there's, it's out of our control. There's laws for reasons and we completely know that. And if we want to follow the path of adoption, this is what we have to do. So be it. Okay, so now that I've explained all of that, <laughs> we've been on this journey for over a year. Uh, February of 2018, we started the process. By the middle of May 2018, we were fully home study ready. Uh, in that two and a half months time frame, while we were working on our home study, we were also working on the information for the child that started the process. Uh, everything with that fell through uh, for multiple reasons. So then fast forward, we had to decide what to do, which there wasn't a whole lot of choice, to be honest. So we ended up paying more money to the agency that did our home study and went under contract with them so that they could facilitate in an adoption through foster care then. So we've, at this point, we've paid out a decent chunk of money and here we are a year, over a year into the process with nothing. Um, I, and I know that probably sounds a little snarky, but guys, that's my update on the adoption. We still have not been matched and it is not for lack of trying. Uh, we've actually received more rejections at this point than I truly care to admit. It's kind of painful actually. Some of them have been legitimate and there's nothing wrong with their reasons. Uh, we've been rejected by several because of the size of our family, which also kind of stinks because the workers who rejected us would rather those children continue to sit in foster care than to go into a large family because of bias. There, there are some who just don't feel it would be a good fit for any number of reasons, but we don't typically get told why. Uh, now, all of that said, there was a sibling group in another state that we had inquired on and their worker actually got back to us with a full reason that 
I completely support. Actually, we all do. It turns out that the siblings have an older sibling that was not listed with that group for adoption. And they have a bond with that sibling and wanted to maintain that. And as such, they want to stay in state. I completely support that. They, there is a solid reason of why leaving the state would not be healthy necessarily. Okay. There was another child in yet another state that we had inquired on. It's actually a neighboring state. And we didn't hear anything for a while. So we kind of thought that they were just ignoring us because that's also a thing that happens a lot. The worker a few weeks later got back to us and said that when they told the family that somebody had inquired, the family thought on it and had decided that they just couldn't let that child go. They wanted to adopt them, which is awesome. We were really happy about that because that meant one less disruption in that child's life. So that was a good thing too. So there are legitimate reasons, but there have been some that we truly thought would be awesome. There were some that we weren't sure. Honestly, there's a lot of kids, there's not a whole lot of information on there, on their profiles. So you inquire to get more information. Not every worker will give it to you. There is a child in another state that we inquired on a little while ago that it was fast replies. Um, it was amazing. Turns out it wasn't the worker replying. It was just the recruiter and he forwarded our home study on to the actual worker. Never heard another word since. It's really disheartening because like that one is a child that is not an easy placement. We're interested. They're, I, and I hate to say it this way, but they're desperate because this is a child listed on more than one site and uh, it's heartbreaking. So here we sit. Uh, all of that said, our home study is still being reviewed by several uh, workers right now. We have gotten uh, more rejections now that our home study is being reviewed by more. But at the same time, we're not hearing anything. Like right now, we're really kind of at a standstill. So I don't know what's going to happen. Now, with that, here's where we're facing. We're in March right now. And our home study is good until the middle of May. In order to continue this journey, we have to update our home study, which is another $1,100, uh, which I'm going to say this too, and there's a chance our worker watches my videos. I don't know, but when we started all of this and we did the home study through them, we were told it was five or $600. And that's what we were told it would cost to renew the home study. As soon as we signed that contract, uh, there was a new amount. That, that five or 600 still exists, but then they tacked on the other amount. And that's not something that was ever disclosed prior. And given the fee that we pay us, like now what we were told, I asked why. And we were told that, well, because when they renew the home study, they'll have to redistribute it to anybody that they've sent it to. Anyhow. Um, apparently it costs five or $600 to redistribute and maybe it does. So, Hey, if you're a caseworker and you're watching this, feel free to talk to me about this because honestly, that is something that's frustrated us. But either way, we're going to have to come up with that money in the next month and a half. If we want to continue this process. Now, if we end up being matched with somebody between now and then, which is a possibility, there's actually several local kids that we have inquired on at this point, because we thought we really need to tighten things in and rather than looking so broad across the country that we really need to look closer to home, which is really tough too. And I hate to say this guys, but South Dakota has a crisis. Like so many states do. Every state has their own crisis and the reason for the number of kids in care and stuff. And South Dakota has a serious alcohol and meth issue. And I hate to say that, but it's the truth. And there's only so much that we can take on because of the other children in our home. So there's a lot of kids in the state that are available for adoption that we can't take on at this point in time. Now give us 10 years and that may change, but it makes looking closer to home tough. Anyhow, I'm rambling about that. We have inquired on kids locally. 
We're waiting to hear back on them as well as others from other states. If we hear back and we're matched in the next month and a half, naturally, yes, we will go ahead and pay the money to renew the home study so that we can go through with the adoption. Right now, we are left weighing, and it's kind of daily. We go back and forth. We really have felt called to adopt. We really feel like this is something we should be doing. But it's also really devastating to be rejected so many times and to know that it's not because we lack merit or knowledge or experience or any of that, that the vast majority of the rejections are because of our family. So do we pay more money to keep being rejected? Or do we take that chance that our child or children are still out there somewhere? I don't know. It's a really tough decision. Um, honestly, if you want to weigh in down in the comments, please feel free. I also... And I've done this before too. If you have any questions about the process, please put them down below. I reply to pretty much any comment. Now I will delete comments that are inappropriate or anything like that. But I do, I welcome questions, uh, thoughts. You know, there's a lot of people who I've talked to in my personal life through here, through social media uh, that don't know where to begin. They don't know what's an option, what's a possibility, what they can do. I'm always happy to answer those questions. Uh, we may not have adopted personally yet, but again, we've been in this for over a year now, personally. I also come from a family, I have three siblings who were adopted out of the foster care system. I grew up as a birth child in a foster home, so this is nothing new to me. Anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off there. I've given you guys the update on the adoption or the lack of update but figured it's been a little while since I've said anything and I just figured I'd let everybody know that we're not any farther in other than the fact we've sent the home study out to more people, which we've sent the home study out. So I don't know. I, I'm going to quit stewing on that. It's late, which makes me ramble more and I think makes me stew a little bit more too. Anyhow, I hope you guys are having a blessed day. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss anything else that's going on. Not everything's a boring rambling update. I do a lot of fun stuff too. I'll see you guys in the next video.